Welcome to the UK African News Update with me, Selbin Kabote. The headlines. Protests are ranging across the UK against the government's borders bill, which demonstrators say could leave migrants stateless. Ghana slaps down Britain's controversial plans to send asylum seekers to Africa for processing. Leading scientists suggest a ban on trophy hunting will undermine animal conservation efforts. Newcastle Museum announces plans to return bronze artifact to Africa. And the excitement as the African concert series prepares to kick off in London. Protests have been held across the UK against the Borders and Nationality Bill, which could become law in a matter of months. Under the bill being debated in the House of Lords, if the British government wants to remove someone's citizenship, it will no longer need to tell them. The UK government claims it's primarily targeting terrorists, war criminals and spies as part of a shake-up of immigration law, but critics have said it will create a climate of fear and inequality directed towards migrant communities. And we have been tirelessly working for the past two months with the Sikh Council, Windrush Lives, and many, many other faith organizations and civil society organizations opposing this very bill. We were today at um, outside of the Lord, Lord's house protesting against this very, very bill. The Nationality on Borders bill is an affront to human rights. This is a bill which attempts to further marginalize minority groups whilst eroding our civil liberties. Communities across the UK are rightfully concerned by this bill, particularly since we, we witness time and time again the tragic deaths of refugees in the Channel and the government's devastating impact and of the Windrush uh, scandal. This is a bill which builds hatred of refugees into the fabric of our democracy. It further entrenches race-based tier systems of nationality into law, inevitably creating another Windrush scandal. We cannot stand by and let such a bill go unchallenged. Protests have been taking place against the plans, with many fearing people from ethnic minority groups could be treated differently to white Britons for committing the same crime, be stripped of their national identity, and even deported. The new part of the law means that the government will no longer have to inform people that their citizenship is being removed. Under international law, and specifically the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, everyone has the right to a nationality so people cannot be arbitrarily be left stateless. But the British government says it is possible to strip people of their citizenship if they have another nationality to fall back on. For example, if they have dual citizenship or if it is possible to get citizenship somewhere else, such as the country their parents come from. However, minority groups say they could become second-class citizens if the bill is passed. That's what more than 20 groups, including the Muslim Association of Britain, Sea Council UK and Windrush Lives said at demonstrations in front of Downing Street in December and January. They claimed the broader powers could allow the government to repeat the Windrush scandal, which occurred when large numbers of long-term British residents, many of them originally from the Caribbean, were told they were in the UK illegally, despite living and working in the UK for decades. Home Secretary Priti Patel says the law could be used in exceptional circumstances on people who pose the most risk to the UK. 
The bill having been passed by MPs in the House of Commons in December is now going through the House of Lords and is due to go to committee stage on 27 January when peers can suggest amendments. Recent rallies against the bill have taken place in London, Manchester, Birmingham and Coventry and are continuing across the country. Earlier, I spoke to human rights activist Lorraine Masia Mponela, who has been publicly speaking out against the bill in Coventry. In my opinion, the Borders Bill is proposing very dangerous rules in the way that people can claim asylum in this country. For example, when your life is in danger, can you choose in the way how you're going to free that country? But this bill will criminalize people who are arriving by a lorry or a boat. It's like telling someone that you should have stayed in your own country and die than rescuing yourself to come to this country. Staying with the UK and immigration. Ghana has slept down the United Kingdom's Operation Dead Meat in which there were plans to send thousands of asylum seekers to the West African nation. Ghana has slapped down Britain's Operation Dead Meat plan in which they hoped to send over thousands of asylum seekers to the West African nation. UK Home Office representatives were said to have approached Ghana and Rwanda with plans to set up processing immigration hubs in those countries. According to press reports, this could mean hundreds of migrants arriving in the UK from France would have been flown to those countries while their asylum claims are being processed. But Ghanaian officials blasted any reports of such plans, insisting they have never held any discussions with Home Office officials. And his foreign office appeared to mock Boris Johnson's strategy to save himself with his Operation Red Meat strategy, which they called Operation Dead Meat. Priti Patel met Ghana's president Nana Akufo Ado last summer. In a statement, Ghana's foreign ministry said the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration wishes to state categorically that Ghana has not engaged with the UK on any such plan and does not intend to consider any such operation in the future. A proposed UK ban on trophy hunting imports risks undermining the conservation of endangered wildlife, according to a group of leading scientists. The UK government is preparing legislation to ban hunting trophies from thousands of species, including lions, leopards, rhinos, elephants, and polar bears. In an open letter seen by The Guardian and signed by more than 100 scientists, conservationists and African community leaders, the group said the ban is poorly conceived, ignores African perspectives and threatens to reverse conservation gains and undermine the livelihoods of rural communities across sub-Saharan Africa. It urged the UK government to implement a smart ban that incentivizes good practice by prohibiting trophies from canned hunting operations where captive bred animals are shot at close range or those that fail to share revenues with local communities. By allowing trophy hunting to continue within the UK, where hunters can pay thousands of pounds to shoot deer, the group said the government was opening up itself to accusations of hypocrisy by banning imports from countries with impressive conservation records such as Namibia and Botswana, where trophy hunting is used to fund conservation. Signatories include the heads of leading conservation non-governmental organizations such as Save the Rhino International, 
academics from the University of Oxford and African community leaders. Supporters of the trophy hunting import ban argue it will help protect endangered species and end a cruel practice. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson has called trophy hunting a disgusting trade and his father Stanley has campaigned in favour of the ban. The former Arsenal striker Samuel Eto, who is the president of the Cameroonian Football Federation, has begged Ian Wright and his claims that the Africa Cup of Nations is being disrespected and that major coverage of the tournament is tinged with racism. Samuel Eto has taken to social media to vent his frustration about the tournament. In a tweet, Eto said there is no greater honor for a sports person than representing your country. The Africa Cup of Nations is a celebration of African pride. He added that AFCON will once more prove the undeniable greatness of African players. The 24-team competition kicked off on the 9th of January in Cameroon and is featuring a museum in Newcastle upon Tye is the latest UK institution to announce plans to retain a Benin bronze to Africa. Officials at the Great North Museum, Hancock, say they will repatriate to Nigerian authorities a brass staff with bed finial used as a musical instrument during ceremonies. Last October, both Jesus College at the University of Cambridge and the University of Aberdeen restituted Benin bronzes to Nigeria. The Great North Museum Hancock, which focuses on natural history and archaeology, is managed by Tyne and Way Archives and Museums on behalf of Newcastle University. The university says in an online statement, given its forceful removal from Berlin, Tyne and Way Archives and Museums advised museum stakeholders, Newcastle University and the Natural Society of Northumbria to consider a proactive repatriation of the object to Nigeria. It has been unanimously agreed that the museum should seek a proactive repatriation of the bronze to Nigeria. The staff was acquired in 1951 after the Wellcome Historical Medical Museum dispersed non-medical objects from its collection. V. Pollock, the Dean of Culture, and the Creative Arts at Newcastle University said the university has no hesitation in retaining the ceremonial stave, which is one of Benin's bronzes as well as an important cultural artifact for the people of Benin. V. Pollock said the brass stave is also a symbol of historic injustice and extreme violence. Sharon Hill, the director of the membership and advocacy group UK Museums Association, tweeted that the decision is great news. And finally, this year's African concert series kicks off this week at the October Gallery in London. One of the highlights of the African concert series will be a performance by Rebecca Omodia on piano and Abel Delka Sadum on percussion. No one has done more to promote African classical music than the prize-winning pianist Rebecca Omodia. With her mixed heritage from Nigeria and Romania, she is ideally qualified to bridge the gap between Western classical music and traditional African music. In 2019, she curated the widely acclaimed First African Concert Series, which has now become an essential part of the London musical calendar. This first concert features Rebecca Omodia herself together with Abalda Odeka Sadum on percussion with music by Ayo Bankole and Christian Onyeji from Nigeria, Kwebenan Ketia from Ghana, David Il from South Africa, and Nabil from Morocco. 
And that's all we have time for this week. Join us for our next bulletin and remember to like and subscribe. I am Selbin Kabote and this has been a UK African News Update.